Well, this one's a given, <clears throat> I guess. Hi, guys. Welcome to Leave Reacts. I hope everyone's having a good day. Finger guns. I know I am. <laughs> and we are back with uh, Petula Clark for the first time. Uh, never heard of her before. Uh, you're listening to the track Don't Sleep in the Subway, which I said that's why it's a given. Uh, but uh, nowadays, it's a, I guess, a different story. Uh, it was written by Tony Hatch and Jackie Trent and recorded by the British singer Petula Clark, who released it as a single in April of 1967. So follow me on a journey back to the 60s. <laughs> it's only like three minutes long, so it's not like very, I don't know, extensive. But it's going to be a good video, I promise. Um, it received a 1968 Grammy Award nomination, but it lost to Up, Up, and Away by channel favorite The Fifth Dimension. Interesting. If y'all aren't subscribed, please help a brother out. Click that icon right below my face. I'd really appreciate it. That's it. All right. Petula Clark. Don't sleep in the subway. Three, two, one, go. This is a request by Paul E. Thank you, Paul. Disagree, cause to reason is not what you care for. You try to be smart, then you take it to heart. Cause it hurts when your ego is deflated. Ooh, 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 ooh. You don't realize that it's all compromise, and the problems are so old. She's got an interesting voice. I like her. Goodbye means nothing when it's all for sure. So why pretend you somewhere else to go? Don't sleep in the subway, darling. Don't stand in the pouring rain. Don't sleep in the subway, darling. Just like that. Those damn singles back in the day. They really are the worst, aren't they? <laughs> that was really good, man. The orchestration on that was great. And she had a really good voice. Um, let's see. Uh, I think it's... Does it have a... Oh, no, it doesn't have it. So it wasn't... All right, from the album These Are My Songs, which was released in 1967... Uh, in a break with longtime collaborator Tony Hatch, Clark joined forces with producer Sonny Burke and arranger conductor Ernie Freeman for this release. Um, didn't they say that he wrote that last that song we listened to though? Uh, the album includes two songs that were released as singles. This is my song with words and music by Charlie Chaplin, and it has been composed as an instrumental theme for his film A Countless, A Countess from Hell. Wow, a countess from Hong Kong. There you go, third time. Uh, it peaked at number one in the United 
Kingdom and number three in the U.S. Don't Sleep in the Subway, the only track written by Hatch and Jackie Trent. Okay, there you go. Who had written much of Clark's previous material. Charted at number five and 12 in the U.S. and U.K. respectively. Um, her, uh, Hatch arranged and produced the song as well. Um, track listing. See, he doesn't have... Oh, doesn't have it like a personnel list or anything, which is interesting. I've never seen that before, honestly. Uh, with an album, with an album with so much info. Um, so I guess it said that uh, who did the orchestration on it? Background. So it said that the song was constructed from three different sections of music previously composed by Hatch. It changes in musical style from pop to symphonic, and then for the chorus up to a Beach Boys like melody. Um, in the lyrics, the narrator advises her sweetheart against storming out on after an argument due to his foolish pride. If he does, he will sleep in the subway or stand in the pouring rain merely to prove his point. Um, it says, although in Scotland there has long existed the Glasgow subway metro line, in England the term subway refers to a pedestrian underpass rather than an underground transit system. Hatch employed the term in the North American sense, according to the song's curator Jackie Trent. The lyrics title or was suggested by the 1961 Broadway musical Subways Are For Sleeping. All right, that's enough Wikipedia knowledge for one day. Um, I really enjoyed that. Her voice is really good. Um, it really... I don't know, it's kind of like a mid, I don't know if it's not, not tenor, I don't know what you would call that. It's like a very, uh, it wasn't like high soprano voice, but she did have those, that range to get there. Um, very breathy, like she has a good cadence to how she sings as well. Um, I like the percussion on it. Whoever did the orchestration, like the actual people playing, they did a fa uh, fabulous job. They totally made the song, to be honest. Uh, the combination of her lyrics and, uh, or not her lyrics, her voice and the um, the uh, instrumentation is, is very, very good. Um, I don't know if I'd listen to it, you know, like on Pandora all the time, but I thought it was a very good song. Um, it was very pretty. It was very sweet, too. Um, I know there's probably a lot of pop, you know, kind of songs like that back in the day, but it also, you know, like we listened to The Fifth Dimension and, uh, what's it called? Um, Magic Garden and like that. I think that was Jimmy Webb and like the Wrecking Crew and stuff. And it's just, they're, they're fabulous to begin with, but. A lot of the pop music of the day, it seems like, was still... It's not like the term pop music we use nowadays. Pop music nowadays is just like whatever fad or whatever passing by trend it is, you know, that people are, you know, hopping on at the moment. But pop music back in the day, it seemed to have like a different definition. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that definition is, but they had great music, you know. It, just because it was pop doesn't mean it was bad in any way. Nowadays, pop is kind of a derogatory term in a way. Um, but... And, I thought it was great, and I'm down for more. If you guys have anything else by Petula Clark you think I'd like, please leave it down below. I'll definitely check it out. And uh, thank you again to Paul Eat for a great pick. I appreciate you, my friend. And uh, I think that's it out of me, guys. If you don't know, Patreon right here. That's a picture of it. Let me hide. There's a link in the description. Uh, if you join the $15 tier or up, you get one for your quest a month. There's also other tiers for other amounts of request. And if you join any of the tiers, uh, you get access to all of our full album reactions to the Beatles, Blind Faith, some other stuff. Tons of King Crimson singles. There's like hours and hours of stuff on there. Um, it's only on Patreon because uh, YouTube doesn't want it, so they can have it. And uh, there's also a PayPal link as well in the description for tips, requests, and anything else. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Adios.